Sometimes it's not about wearing the best things in the game. Sometimes it's just about style, finesse and looking cool. Look at that, a sturdy armor, a maul with some serious girth and to top it all off a fucking viking helmet with wings to boot. It's even in all black. Cause as we all know, once you go black, you don't go back. God damn does the Immortal King set look cool. And to preemptively strike the haters, yes, grief is better and makes the game much easier. But don't wish it was easier, wish you were better. Don't wish for less problems, wish for more skills. Don't wish for less challenges, wish for more wisdom. And use that wisdom to decide to look really fucking cool while smashing some demon's face in so hard he can use it to look out of his own arsehole. But to do all of that, we first need to get to level 76, cause big boy items require big boy levels. However, the game starts at level 1. And to speed the process up, I went ahead and took a completely random amount of gold out of my shared stash and used it to buy two maces. I quickly used them to clear the den of evil and spend my skill points on Maze Mastery for its attack rating and critical strike. My little big adventure almost comes to an unfortunate end in the cold plains where I escape by the skin of my teeth. Luckily the first real piece of gear from my shared stash comes in sooner rather than later in the form of a crush flange. With its crushing blow, 15 strength and 50 fire resist, this thing will easily carry you through normal. And we don't really talk about the knockback though, like we would rather just ignore it if we could. The second weapon I decide to use is a Sivurb Scudgel. And I can be all high and mighty about why I would do that. I can talk about how the aesthetics are very pleasing and I like holding a big club with one hand cause it feels very familiar. But it's just because it hits really hard. 50 maximum damage with normal attack speed at level 9. That out damages even most two handed weapons at this point of the game. For comparison, a maul deals 30 to 43 at a slow pace, and a spear deals 3 to 15, which is just embarrassing honestly. Not only that, it gets more max damage on every level. I never hear anyone about this thing, so I think it's just forgotten because of how common it is to find it. But this thing is a massive damage stick, and that's not even all. It is a nice little top off in the form of some attack rating as well. I also go ahead and equip the dead sash and belt, because in tandem they give 30% increased attack speed, cannot be frozen, 50 resist all and life lead. My early game setup isn't done yet though. I also go ahead and equip the Hussar's boots for their 20 faster run walk and their fire resist. To round out the first gear setup I go ahead and equip the angelic combo as well. The ring and amulet combine to give a boatload of attack rating and 75 life. I've also started specking into double swing because I am swinging with two things and sometimes life just doesn't have to be difficult. The runes for a stealth also magically appear in my shared stash. Life can be wild. I go ahead and make a stealth out of them, cause I like running fast. For my helmet I go and equip a Tarn Helm, cause of its plus one to all of my skills and having 50 mf is just fun. The Antario fight turns out to be a bit harder than expected considering I've just equipped a full gear set. I expected to just walk up to her and smash her with my big dick energy. However, I failed to clear out all the minions and other mobs and now my double swing keeps going for every target except the giant demon lady in front of me. Luckily, to the surprise of no one, I managed to clear the first boss of the game while using every single piece of gear I could ever give myself. While level 76 is still far away, I decide to go farming beetle burst in the far oasis. To speed this process up, I look around Act 1 waypoints for easy experience shrines. I do this until I hit level 21, because at that point all of my charms unlock. I'll show them at the end, but it's just a bunch of fine charms for more attack rating and damage. And at this point my damage and attack rating are looking pretty sweet. And I decide to show Fangskin my damage output very thoroughly and up close. Because I have been playing on players 8 so far, I end up making it to level 24 in the Arcane Sanctuary which unlocks Bone Snap, which is only one weapon, so to respecking we go. Bone Snap is the perfect weapon to keep up with the big dick energy of this run. 69 strength required, nice, a bunch of resistances and a metric crap ton of damage. Skill wise I go ahead and spec into leap attack, not because it's good, but because it's great. And if you are wondering why would I do that instead of being a responsible person and min maxing the fuck out of everything. 
I present to you this Durial fight. A 3 hit Durial fight, doesn't that just bring a smile to your face? The rare ring he dropped wasn't anything special by the way. In the Flayer dungeon I go ahead and use leap attack to ignore the laws of physics by jumping through a bar and a ceiling. The witch doctor isn't much of a threat either. Nor is the council. Seriously, sometimes it's just unbelievably satisfying to just walk up to something and destroy the absolute living fuck out of it. Which is something the dolls in the Durance know all about. Cause if I jump in and kill those, I will die. Doesn't matter what gear I'm wearing, dolls won't care. So I go ahead and kite my way through the Durance of Hate level 1. Getting stuck on some corpses like a pleb during my kiting. Luckily, they can't walk downstairs, so level 2 saves me from them. I cut some corners in the Durance level 2 before introducing myself to the Lord of Hatred himself. And by introducing, I mean I bash his brains in. And by the Lord of Hatred, I mean that bottle of soup on the ground. Isual is the first to take more than 3 hits. The fight ends up being a massive slog, with it taking 6 hits to take down Isual. In the meanwhile, I've reached level 25 as well. Which means it's time to equip some boots that were made for walking. And with that 40 faster run walk and pile of resist, that is exactly what what the Natalia boots will do. In the Chaos Sanctuary, I go ahead and one shot Lord the size. I mean, I can just look at that on repeat, it makes me so happy. The Diablo fight is insanely tight, they should nerf that guy. At one point I even needed to drink a potion. Seriously, just nightmare fuel all the way through. Who came up with this? I go and farm Eldritch because I am finally getting close to being able to wear the first pieces of the Immortal King set. At level 29, the belt unlocks. This is actually quite a nice belt. It has the maximum amount of slots, 25 to strength and a total of 59 resists. At level 30, the gloves unlock as well. They give 20 to strength and dexterity, which is some nice damage and attack rating. But the big winner here is the set bonus of 25% increased attack speed. And at level 31, the boots unlock. With their 40 run walk, 110 attack rating and 44 life, they are impressive and disappointing at the same time. I don't know why, but I always felt like these should have something more going on. I would love if they had cannot be frozen, because obviously the king's shoes would keep him warm. The difference in health pools and tankiness really shows when you think about how the past fights have gone so far, and then look at how much damage we are dealing to Bale. The fight is still extremely safe, but the overpoweredness is gone with the wind at this point. Bale ends up dropping me a pile of Amazon gear. The boots that he drops are water walks. Those roll 45 to 65 on the life total. So let's see what we end up getting. It ends up being a disappointing 46. The shark skin belt he dropped is a razor tail, which is an amazing belt for a javazon or a throwing barbarian, but we are neither of those. Terror zones in normal are cute, but nothing levels faster than players 8 pindle skin runs. I go ahead and do those until I hit level 34. During my runs I find a rare circlet that despite rolling offensive hours is still a 20 faster cast rate, 9 strength, 14 resist all helmet, which I think is pretty sweet. Guillaume's face is one of the best in slot melee helms in the game, thanks to its crushing blow and deadly strike. However, I quickly encounter a problem with it. It doesn't have mana leech. And since crushing blow and deadly strike don't matter when you are hitting things dead in one or two swings anyway, I go ahead, farm one more level and equip a steel skull for its life and mana leech. And of course, the magic find is a nice bonus as well. I wrap up normal by having formal introductions with Radamant and head into Nightmare. Nightmare is all about getting to act 5 as quickly as possible, so I play Easter Bunny with Corpse Fire by bunny hopping around him for a bit and then give him a fun surprise in the form of his death by bludgeoning. The smith tries to convince me that a small hammer is better than a big hammer, but obviously he is wrong. Cause big dick hammers have big dick hammer energy and small dick hammers are just not where things are at. I mean, come on, it's just science. After convincing the smith that size does matter, I ignore the point of what a jail is by jumping through anyway. Then I deal with Antario. Before heading towards Act 2, I go ahead and respec. Not because it's strategically important, but because I am out of leap attack jokes. Which is a problem if I want to keep on pretending I'm funny. Instead, I focus on becoming ready for the build I will use with the Immortal King set when I have all of it on. 
one of the things I try to do in these set to showcase videos is really looking at what the set is trying to do and build around that. So what I noticed while pretending to prepare for this is that every single item in this set has a plus to defenses, which indicates it wants to really focus on defenses. But do we have a build for that? Why yes, yes we do. We can go for a concentration barbarian, which is perfect because I've never recorded a video with that anyway. Stat wise, you want to invest as much into strength as you think you can get away with. Every single point of strength adds a small bit of damage. Don't go overboard though, you do want to have some vitality because dying is some serious problems. Skill wise, this is the safest build on the planet. Some would say even boringly so, but it does work really well with all the extra defenses the set gives us. So let's go for it. Synergy wise, Concentrate wants Bash, Berserk and Battle Orders. Because fuck Shout, am I right? It feels so wrong that this has synergy with Battle Orders and not with Shout. I go ahead and max Concentration and put 1 point into Berserk to deal with Physical Immunes. However, I am going to mostly ignore the 1% Berserk damage, cause it's just not worth it at all. I put 1 point into Fine Potions, cause it means I will have infinite full reduce for the rest of the run. And follow it up by doing the usual Battle Orders thing that every Bob on the planet does every single time. At this point we have become a man of focus, commitment, sheer will, something which Radamant knows very little about. So I go ahead and kill 3 of his men in a bar with my pencil. Speaking about my new pencil, time for some gear swaps. My stealth gets upgraded to a hustle, with its 65 run walk, 40 increased attack speed, 6 evade, 10 dexterity and 10 resist all. This is just stealth on crack. I also went ahead and switched to a steel driver. Bone snap is very cool, but it's also very slow, which matters a lot for concentrate. Steel driver, however, is very fast, and I like being fast. In the maggot lair, I do realize I made a mistake. I definitely should have waited with my respec until after jumping through the maggot lair while ignoring everything. Instead, I get to swing my way through every single goddamn monster on the planet one at a time. And while the game is busy reiterating the poorness of my respec timing, I end up finding a small charm that is so close yet so far away at the same time in the arcane sanctuary in the form of a 1-11-11 fine small charm of sustenance. I want to like stuff like this because that charm really tried, but it just misses the mark. Against Duriel I have a swinging contest which results in him dropping me unique light plated boots. These are goblin toes. They have text on them, but the only thing that matters is that they have crushing blow. Why don't my boots have crushing blow? Can you imagine the immortal king's boots with some crushing blow and cannot be frozen? Like even 5% will be so sick. Sazak the burning ends up dropping me some serious boots. 30 run walk, 40 lightning resist and 9 magic find. If this was a solo cell found run, I'd be all over these. In the Great Marsh, I prove to the world that I have used my transient curse by talking about our difference with the gnomes like a real man. And after lighting the campfire, I await for my grueling conflict that will be the Gitbin fight. My first real fight comes in the Flayer Dungeon level 1. I encounter a group of cursed dark shapes and almost end up losing the run, which would have been massively embarrassing. Instead, I end up kiting them around, hitting them one at a time until they all go down. In the sewers level 1 I get stuck and decide to take the risk and kill the dolls. Even fully decked out they still pack a wallop, but I survive to fight another day. The fire enchanted on the council also hurts a ton, but once again I live to fight another day. At this point the game is starting to catch up to my power level. I have another close call against Mephisto but end up winning my game of whack a math and head into act 4. I've reached level 45 at this point, which means I get to equip a Raven Frost. This will be one of the endgame rings for this run, because for some reason the entire Immortal King set does not get cannot be frozen. The extra attack rating and dexterity is always welcome. Oh, and there is some cold absorb as well, which is nice. Hephasto tries to convince me that the smith was right and that a small hammer works just as fine, but I am a man of dedication. So I take the Hellforge hammer from him and try to prove my point by using my big hammer to smash the tiny soul stone. But it doesn't take, surely this has to be a mistake. 
Something's gotta be wrong. My big dick hammer should easily crush this puny pebble. Making sure no one is around to see, I switch to the small hammer and smash the hellforge. It ends up dropping me a co rune. I've reached level 47 at this point, meaning that I get to pull on the Immortal King's Will. This helmet grants me 2 to war cries, magic find, 2 sockets and a bunch of other stuff. All in all, this helmet is okay, but just like with the boots, I kind of wish it did more. I don't know, like both the helm and the boots just feel like unfulfilled potential. I'm keeping the sockets open for now because I haven't decided yet what I'm going to put in them. Wearing the helmet grants the gloves an additional 10% life leech, the belt and the boots get an extra pile of defenses. Which is why I decided to go for a concentration bob in the first place. Because the game is catching up on my power level I also go ahead and do the safe thing and switch to a treachery for the chance to proc fade. Being fast is nice and all but gotta make sure I don't die. Lord Desize took 2 hits this time, which while very strong is not as satisfying. The ring he drops has attack rating, life leech, but because of the quite low rolls it's just another item that really tried so hard and got so far but in the end didn't even matter. And I'm happy I put my trust in treachery, cause with the hustle, Diablo's firestorm would have been as far as I would go. Even with the fade proc that is a lot of damage. In Act 5 I start to not one shot everything anymore. This ruins my immersion and this character is ruined. Shank ends up dropping me the best Thor rune I have ever seen. This jewel has cold resist, mana after each kill, fire and poison damage. And despite wanting to wait on what to socket, I decide to socket it into the helm anyway. The helm isn't rare and I just have another one in my stash for if I decide I want to do something else with it. Which I end up doing cause otherwise I wouldn't be bothering with this explanation. While saving Anya I level up to level 55. Which means it's time for my next final piece of gear. But first, some lore. The Immortal King's true name is Bull Kathos. He was one of the first Nephilim, and just like me, he was renowned for his immense strength, size, bravery and fortitude. He was also the guy that organized the barbarian tribes, which ended up with them settling in Harrogath. The barbarians treat him as a deity, and in the game a bunch of items are named after him. He even has his own set which I used to do a run with before. There is however another item named Bull Gothos, and they could have made this ring a part of the Bull Gothos set, which would solve both the problems with set rings being irrelevant and could be used to power up the set, which they did in Diablo 3. However, here they didn't. Here they made it a unique. I am going to get into some hard speculation here. I can't prove any of this. And all of this might be complete bullshit, but I like the theory and it's my video, so here goes. There are actually two immortal kings, the second one being Warusk, a barbarian king, and according to the Diablo fandom wiki, he is the guy that formed the council of Harrogath. Warusk's weapon was a big ass hammer, and he had a belt forged for him. And when you look at the image and the description of Bulkathos, it describes him as wearing a golden band and two swords. So I think the Bulkathos wedding band should actually have been a unique coronet, cause on the one image of him I could find he isn't wearing a ring at all. So I think the Immortal King set is actually Warusk's set and not Bulkathos' set, which implies a couple of things. First, we have all been wrong for decades about who the set belongs to. Second, for how important he actually was, Warusk should get a way bigger piece of the action in the game story. Third, I didn't have a good segue to talk about any of this, but wanted to share with the class anyway. But yeah, I go ahead and equip the Bull Kathos Wedding Band. It has plus 1 to skills, life leech and some life. Just like the rest of the run though, it is chosen for style, because I'd personally wear a rare or crafted ring with a bunch of mods like dual leech, attack rating and stats over it. I get revenge on Bale for destroying the world stone and decide that if I am already socketing random stuff into my helm, I might as well put in a second gem. At this point though, it is time for the rise and grind mentality. I'm nowhere near level 76 and I'm not leaving Nightmare until I'm wearing the entire Immortal King set. So I decide to start off with some more bail running. But with the higher player count, I'm having serious trouble even clearing the way in the Worldstone Keep. The champion deadlords are giving me quite the run for my money. However, I don't want to run for my money, I want to clown on some fools while guiding their hands to their dads. So I go back to town and get my bro Frisian, who is obviously named after the Frisian kingdom, which is an old kingdom that used to lie in the northern parts of the Netherlands and Germany, and still kind of exists, but not in the same way. 
But even with his help, I don't want to deal with the high player count souls. So back to the drawing board we go. To fix my damage, I go ahead and use a perfect emerald, a soul rune and a rail rune to upgrade my steel driver to a Mattel de Fer, giving it a big damage boost. The death lords still aren't dying in one or two hits, but at least now I'm winning the fights against them. Meaning I can push on much harder now and do some actual level grinding. It still isn't exactly fast though. Once I hit level 68, I go ahead and grab the final intermediate weapon from my stash. It is the wind hammer. And like every other big dick hammer we've used so far, it is a massive damage stick and nothing else. But that is just what the doctor ordered. Strangely enough, it's the twister triggers that stun enemies that actually end up being the most powerful, allowing me to bluntly hammer my enemies to death without resistance. As I'm making my way through the halls of the dead terror zone, I notice that the super chest does not contain a cube. After the halls of the dead terror zone ends, the next terrorized area ends up being the spider forest and the spider cavern. Here, after dealing with Cezark once again, I go ahead and open up the super chest. Kalim's eye falls out. I've already done the quest though. I get that this is because I have a cube in my inventory, but there's no eye there. However, my immersion is ruined and after 23 years, this is the thing that makes the game a literal unplayable dumpster fire of a train wreck. That being said, Frisian has been getting some level ups as well. And I figured I could give him a bunch of griefs, a fortitude and some super min maxi helm. But do you know what dies if you min max that hard? style. So instead I go ahead and give him the full Sasabi set. And while being nowhere near optimal and boring and stuff like that, it has some serious survivability in those set bonuses. 15 life leech, almost 6 jar runes worth of maximum life, 30 resist all, 2 bursts worth of physical damage reduce, and it also grants a nice 40 faster run walk, cause the frenzy mercenary wasn't mercenarying around fast enough anyway. For ultimate style though, I wish the armor would grant one more life. After some more grinding with the bar bros, I managed to finally hit level 76. So it is time to ascend to being an immortal king. And look at that pure beauty and style. The Ogre Maul has 40 base increased attack speed, but I put two Shale Runes in it to get to 80. All the other mods on it are just big piles of damage added, straight enhanced damage, damage to demons, damage to undead, crushing blow and a little bit of damage of every element. For having the full set equipped we also get plus 3 to barbarian skills, 450 attack rating, 150 life, 50 resist all and 10 magic damage reduction. Seriously, with the power of this thing, it's all ogre now for the monsters. But wait, there is more, we also get the armor now. The Immortal King Soul Cage is the set Sacred Armor, making you think about how close to Terios might you were every time it drops. Stat wise it unfortunately is more like the boots in that it's strangely cool and weirdly underwhelming at the same time. It has a chance to cast level 5 enchant for some more attack rating and fire damage, which is a nice little boost from an armor. Next up it gets plus 2 to combat skills. It also gets 400 defense and 50 poison resist, which is all neat but very underwhelming for one of the rarest set items in the game. The set bonuses try and compensate that at least, granting a bit more defense and 40 to all the other resistances, while granting a nice 25% faster hit recovery as well. Still, it's kind of weird that one of the rarest items in the game is about the same power level as a smoke rune word you can get for a lum rune. And I say that with the nicest of intentions, cause I love the smoke rune word. The other pieces also get a few small extra bonuses for having the full set equipped. The boots now grant 160 defense, 2 to combat skills and 25 magic fight. They also grant half freeze duration. This not being cannot be frozen is basically a hate crime that blatantly shows off that the designer of this set liked casters more. The belt now grants plus 2 to masteries, an insane 20% to physical damage reduction some more defenses and faster hit recovery. The gloves are the ones that truly come in hot though. They now grant freezes target plus 2 for some nice crowd control, 10 life and mana leech, a bit more defense and 25 attack speed. Seriously, without these, you would be slurping mana pots and hoping things don't hit you back. 
In the final helm and armor sockets you can put whatever you want. I decide to go with an enhanced damage jewel for both, boosting up my damage just that little bit more. For Frisian, I decide to complete his transformation to Crypto Bro by giving him the unique cryptic sword Frostwind. It's not a great choice or anything, but I thought it was funny, and if it's terrible I can just always change it out later. And with our prep complete, it is finally time to get into hell. In a rowdy game of smash or pass, I decide that I would smash Corpse Fire. As my reward, I end up finding a lightning skiller, which is always a sweet little find, you never have enough of those. Continuing on with my game of smash smash or pass, I decide that this mint is also a smash. One thing that is very cool design wise about this set is that because of all the additional elemental damage and the enchant triggers, you have enough non-physical damage to deal with physical immunes in whatever way you like. It's a bit of chunking away at them, but they will go down. However, as you can see on this second pack of physical immunes, Berserk is so much faster. Hmm, and Dario, yes. This is an easy one, yup, definitely a smash. The decision on Rodamond is a bit harder, he is surrounded by skeletons, who actually end up giving me some trouble. Not something I was expecting after wearing my super high end fancy pantsy set, let's just call it the cost of wearing style. Also smash on Rodamond. The maggot lair is a bit crowded, but nothing I can't deal with. Even with them having a fanaticism aura, I am a man of focus, dedication and sheer will after all, and it's obvious they know very little about that. In the final room I deal with Coldworm, the Burrower and their cronies, cause if there's one thing I will not tolerate, it is thievery, and even though they couldn't possibly have stolen the staff themselves, they are accessories to the crime and therefore need to die. It also turns out they have more stolen goods in there, as on its death, Coldworm drops me a unique serpent skin armor. This is a skin of the Viper Magi, one of the best caster armors in the game. It can roll 20 to 35 resist all, so it's a bit above average on the roll at 29. But more importantly, I go ahead and take back my staff. Things also become much tighter than I would like in the Claw Viper Temple level 2, considering this is one of, if not the highest end of sets for the Barbarian. Having to struggle this much is kind of not amazing to be honest. Every time I drop an IK armor, I have to wipe off the tears of not finding materials instead. And when I'm wearing it, I at least want to clown on the game, instead of kind of having those tears come back. Also, smash on Fangskin. Things are spawn camping hard in the Arcane Sanctuary. I wait for a bit to consider my plan of attack, but decide there is really only one way through this, and that is with, well, violence. So I go ahead, give it a good old rebel yell, jump in the portal and start swinging. Luckily I end up spawning behind them, cause there was no room for me in the front anymore, allowing me to swing in from the back until all of them are all of the deadsies. And it's an obvious full on smash on the summoner. The holy freeze on Turiol slows me down quite a bit, but his attention seems to be focused on Frisian, so it takes a while but smash it went. He ends up dropping a pavis, which is a jerky sanctuary which has the best in-slot shield for an energy shield sorceress thanks to its combination of resistances with a big pile of physical and magic damage reduction and very high chance to block. Seriously, I don't know why, but I just love this shield, it just feels right, you know? Another item that just feels right is the flash render that drops in the spider forest. This thing is amazing on a shapeshifting druid with its plus 3 to skills and checklist of mods melee weapons want. Whoever designed this was in a loving mood that day for sure. Flat damage added, check, crushing blow, check, deadly strike, check, open wounds, check, prevent monster heal, check. Seriously, this thing is a few sockets or some increased attack speed away from being the best unique in the game. In the spider cavern I go ahead and smash the zark, I just hope I won't feel any burning after. I end up getting a nice skip to the flayer jungle straight from the spider forest, which is fantastic because I did end up finding the great marsh and I honestly just wanted nothing to do with any of that soul filled nonsense. After another exciting fight to the death for the git bin, I get a crappy ring, but more importantly, I get a new weapon for Frisian. I figured he deserves it, so I go ahead and give him the weapon named after my favorite Magic the Gathering card. Enhanced damage and life leech are nice, it also has some open wounds, but I'm not gonna claim that this is some amazing choice to give to him. It is pretty cool though, and I like it, so he will be using it. Things are pretty busy in the Flayer dungeon. 
with about a billion boss packs converging in a single hallway. However, that aforementioned hallway is also a nice funnel that only allows them to get slaughtered one at a time instead of surrounding me and making my life actually difficult. This would have been very dangerous if it was a wide open area, so a big shout out to that tunnel, cause I owe it a solid. In the lower Kurast I end up finding a Mel rune under a tree trunk. Seriously, if you weren't yet, you should always check things like this. The combination of concentration and berserk fails when I encounter a physical and magical immune monster in the ruined temple. Luckily, the planeteers have imbued my hammer with the powers of earth, fire, wind, water and heart and I manage to defeat the monster. And after pitching Stormcrow to force of will, it is time for us to clear out the rest of the ruined temple. And by us, I mean Frisian, cause look at him go, it's, if him being fully surrounded and not even being in trouble isn't a ringing endorsement to the Sasabi set, I don't know what is. His damage is low, but that is because I also memed the Blood Moon Sword on him. But despite that, he is barely even getting a scratch on him, while taking down everything around. He's really out there showing everyone who is the boss. So I decide to just give him his moment, cheer him on, and go on clean up duty for anything trying to get away. In the Kuras Bazaar, I end up finding what may be the weirdest unique in the game. It is the unique Siege Crossbow. I'm going to be an adult here and ignore the obvious bus spitter penis joke and I'm going to be looking at just the stats on this thing. Cause what in the crack were they smoking on this one? This is a crossbow that has a chance to trigger poison nova and lower resist. It also has plus 2 to necromancer skills. Cause those obviously want crossbows and have trouble casting those things themselves. I seriously do not get the design of this weapon. What were they going for here? Did they think crossbow necros would be a thing? Are crossbow necros a thing? I have so many questions on this one. One thing that will never be questionable content though is the presence of dolls and the fear they imprint to every single character in the game. Luckily, this time around, Frisian has taunt and ends up taking all the heat for me, making for safe passage through the sewers. And well, what can I say about the council? They spit hydras, they aren't very tanky, and despite the hydras dealing a gazillion damage to Frisian, even he has no problem surviving here. So what is there really to say? The only real thing to wonder here is, are they a smash or a pass? And come on, we all know the answer, smash. Figuring that I have physical damage reduction and maximum fire resist from the set, I felt ballsy and decided to just hammer away at the boss pack doll myself in the Durance of Hate. This actually went fine. The boss was a doll and went down without a problem. Of course, the other dolls saw and would not let this transgression stand, so immediately I am attacked by a fanaticism pack of them to remind me of where my place in the packing order is. If anyone was wondering, the packing order goes me, the dirt, the worms inside of the dirt, the floor, Mephisto and then the dolls. Do I even need to say it? Of course, Mephisto is an obvious smash. The planes of despair are filled to the brim with souls, however, between my maximum lightning resist and serious pile of damage, I just two shot them and managed to get through without too many problems. The river of flame ends up being a flaming hot getting stuck part of action. Between the Erdars and the maggots I can only do like Sisyphus and start swinging my hammer endlessly. I am happy that the Sasabi set is once again coming through big time. Frisian is just casually thanking those Erdars, no questions asked, which prevents this from coming a huge mess. So what do you want to do in a situation like this? First you want to take out the things that are a direct threat to your survival. In this case that means I am prioritizing the morphines over the maggots, cause those, while annoying, barely deal any damage. One thing you can tell here is that the boss pack of them isn't the source of the fanaticism aura, cause if they were, the Erdos would be in range of it as well and would be smacking way harder. The next dangerous thing I can reach is the unique Erdar. Killing him will relieve some of the pressure of Frisian. It's not like he's dying, but the next order of business is to get control of the screen, meaning that instead of being surrounded I should try not being surrounded instead. I decide to work my way to the right, cause the maggots still aren't doing much of anything. However, I end up randomly smacking my way through them, which allows me the most important thing to do in a situation like this. Cause just like when your tub is overflowing, we need to turn off the spawners. In this case, it means I go and kill all the blood maggots. 
which also nicely takes out the fanaticism aura. To finish things up, it is now time to clear out the Urdas and save Frisian, who is still tanking like an absolute champion there. One giant pile of corpses later, I go berserk on Hevasto before taking his small dick hammer cause I needed to crush the soul stone while no one's watching. The Hellforge nets me a foul rune. In the Chaos Sanctuary, I go and say smash on all three of Diablo's maids and the big guy himself. And well, what can I say? A giant demon with a whip. Nothing but the smashiest of smashes for Mr. Overseer. The ancients make it a horrible night to have a curse, but luckily the immortal king set actually proves its name worth and just tanks straight through it without a problem. And I don't even think I have to mention this, but yes, it's a triple smash on them. In the Worldstone Keep, I finally find the limit for how tanky Frisian actually is. A group of fanaticism and cursed succubi and death lords finally ends him. In record time as well, and I have to run back, cause that shit would end me in record time too. In a big case of I don't know why, but I won't be complaining about it. After coming back through the town portal, the succubi that grants the aura has flown solo and straight towards me, allowing me an easy kill to end this mess. Even I have my limits of memory, but we are not finding those today. Lower resist while encountering a souls boss back, no problem. And yes, remember the packing order? Yup, I'm still low on it. So when the dolls come running, I bravely flee behind Frisian and wait for him to clear them out. The thing I hate the most about the dolls in the throne room isn't even that it's dolls. I mean, it's not great, but I can deal with that. However, my problem is that they are really fucking hard to see because of the color scheme, especially combined with the demons. Between the souls and the dolls, I probably should have just reset this, but what good is it being the king if you have to scour away with your tail between your legs at the first sign of problems or challenges? All I need to do is for Frisian to wish for more skills instead. Easy peasy. The minions aren't much of a problem, so I go ahead and push smash on those as well. And let's be real, a big open playground, tentacles flying around everywhere, he even brings a friend. How could I not say smash on Bale? So, did I end up going smash on everything in the entire game? Yes, absolutely fucking lewdly I did. And you wanna know why? Cause if the history of the world has taught us one thing, it's that it's good to be the immortal king. With the run done, I will have the gear and stuff showing up in the background. In the meanwhile, I want to go ahead and thank everyone for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and I'm gonna go and insert the usual spiel about how it really helps if you subscribe to the channel. I also like money, so if you want to become a member on YouTube or Patreon, I am A-OK -okay with that. You can find links to all of that in the video description. You can find the list of the music I used there as well. And with that all being said and shown, I wish you all the best and for my final words I can only say one thing. Hail to the king baby.